Hey guys, and welcome to another Game Explain discussion. I'm your host, Ash Paulson, and today I'm joined by Colin McIsaac from Gamnesia to discuss the surprise reveal of Super Mario Run and the Apple Watch version of Pokemon Go at Apple's iPhone 7 keynote event. So let's get started. All right, Colin. Well, we were just talking about this right before yeah. starting recording, but uh, what a morning, huh? Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, I mean, here oh I was. Yeah, like I was thinking I was just going to kind of, you know, lie in bed and kind of lazily watch the iPhone 7 reveal because I'm, you know, I'm an <laughs> iPhone user, so I'm kind of excited to see what they're going to have. And suddenly, mm -hmm. here's Shigeru Miyamoto from Nintendo to talk about Mario for the iPhone. And I'm like, oh my god, I have to call Andre and Derek. I got to get someone to discuss this with uh -huh. because they're on vacation. Yeah, yeah. So. I was on the bus in LA, and I was uh, I got a message in uh, our, our our group channel for Gamnesia. They're like, Mario's on iOS, guys. Like, we gotta cover this right now. And I was like, Oh my god, I gotta get home. Jesus, what am I gonna do? Um, so yeah, I mean, what a morning. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you know, we obviously knew that uh, that Nintendo had more uh, mobile games planned, but we had no idea that they were going to announce one today at the yeah. iPhone Seven keynote. Right. Right. So um, they and we also. Yeah. I was. I was just going to say we also didn't really think Mario was going to come so soon. We kind of figured, uh, at least I kind of figured that Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem would be the next ones, and I knew, you know, Mario's got to be in the mix somewhere because yeah. they wouldn't have an iPhone plan without Mario, but. Um, because they hadn't announced it, it seemed like they would take their time. But you know, what a way to announce it! I mean, this is a perfect thing to do. Come to Apple. Don't don't make Apple come to you. Yeah, I mean, this is really you know, this shows that Nintendo is fully embracing the idea of working with uh, you know companies like Apple with for right. for brand new mobile apps. I mean, this is really Nintendo fully embracing the idea of mobile now. I mean, obviously we've mm -hmm. got we've had Mitomo and Pokemon Go, but I mean, there can be no mistaking it now for for Nintendo to be. A guest at Apple's keynote, and even yeah. uh, I think even it was Tim Cook who who had this throwaway line where he was like, "Our partners at Nintendo." And oh, like, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm sure it's not an official partnership, but we do at least know that Super Mario Run is a timed exclusive for iOS. So there's yeah. at least some sort of you know exclusivity deal going on there. Yeah, and they've got the Mario stickers for iOS 10, I think it is. Yeah, 10. Yeah. Um, those are coming out, and I don't know exactly how stickers are going to work. I know I've got a friend who's got, like, a beta uh, iOS 10, so he sort of showed me a little bit. But, okay. Um, but uh, those look like those could potentially be really fun. Um, I hope they also bring them to, like, Facebook Messenger, and I don't think Twitter uses stickers. To the, uh, I anyway, don't think it does, um, yeah. I, 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 in general, think that Nintendo would be really well suited to bring, like, all their franchises to stuff like stickers for Facebook and, and stuff like that because that's how characters sort of spread uh, these days. And so, um, you know, like Mario's perfect, obviously. I think Kirby, Pokemon, you know, they've got some great sets of characters that they can release. And so to see that on iOS 10 for the stickers, whatever, how, however those are going to work in iMessage, uh, that's really encouraging too. Yeah, so I, I, I agree. I mean, to have all of Nintendo's key franchises available across so many key Apple apps, like, you know, Mario should just be the beginning. And I mean, this really, oh, yeah. this really is a great way, I think, for Nintendo to gain back some mind share among yeah. today's kids, because, you know, right now it's all about Angry Birds and, and Minecraft. Well, and other <laughs> I don't know about those games right now. But well, that's true. Point but taken, I mean, though, yeah. But I mean, I, you know, I have to say, though, even now... Yeah, of course, this is just anecdotal, but I'll walk around and I'll see kids with, you know, Angry Birds backpacks and lunch. Yeah, I do still see that, too. You're right. And so it's just, I mean, this is the kind of thing where, you know, parents hand, often hand their eye devices, their tablets or whatever to their kids while they're busy yeah. doing something else. And now with Nintendo being, or with Mario specifically being on iPhone, this is a great mm -hmm. way to kind of get Mario back into the kids of... But, you know, uh, of otherwise left, you know, gamers who might not otherwise pick up like a 3DS or oh, something yeah. like that. Oh yeah, it's no question that this is a great move to get back the, you know, the future generations of gaming, the people who are going to grow up now and uh, have no nostalgia for Nintendo's characters. Right. So, it's so, a good move. Well, Super Mario Run specifically, now that appears to be kind of, uh, you know, an automatically scrolling runner, like, you know, uh -huh. it's... It, at first glance, it doesn't appear to be anything majorly revolutionary. It seems to be, you know, a Mario game that, that Nintendo touts that you can play with one hand for the first time ever. And, right. you know, you tap on the screen to jump. I guess depending on how you tap, Mario jumps differently. But I don't know. It, 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 I've been I've seen comparisons to Rayman, and that seems apt. 
Um, I don't know what the Rayman app looked like, but I mean, I think that it's a great solution for a Mario game on phones. Um, I mean, it, it, you know, it looks and seems to feel like 2D Mario. Um, and I think it looks like a lot of fun. Um, the only thing that kind of concerned me is the level didn't look, the levels they played didn't look that interesting. Yeah, um, So I I'm hoping you. they're just displaying, you know, some early game content and that later on, you know, as you... I don't know actually how the level progression is going to work at all. Uh, that's, I guess, still a big question, come to think of it. But uh, assuming it works similarly to a traditional Mario game where you've got like 1-1, one, one, excuse me, 1-2, one, 1-3, one, whatever, right. um, you know, by World 8 or however far they go, I'm sure it's going to be, the, the challenge is going to pick up and it's going to be a lot of fun. And I imagine that they're going to have some sort of like time trials and like enemy challenges like they had in New Super Mario Bros. U that can keep you coming back to replay levels again and again. Um, you know, uh, getting interesting different things out of each level more than once so that they can essentially just uh, keep you playing the game for a lot longer than you otherwise might. Yeah, well, and, and uh, that's kind of interesting too, talking about level progression, because I think what the, the only thing that we really do know is that this is not going to be a free-to-play game. There is going to be... Right traditional level progression and the game you buy is, is you know it is going to be a, buy, a game that you purchase traditionally now there will right. be in-app purchases but you are buying the game and it's not free to play so the in-app purchase is actually here's what it looks like the apple description said um you can download a free version with a portion of the content uh and that's the that's essentially what you download from the app store and then the in-app purchase is the full game so oh, okay. it sounds kind of basically just like a demo. Well, that, that's actually a lot more positive than I was expecting. I yeah, was thinking for sure. maybe, you know, you do buy the core game and that's fine, but maybe they would have like cosmetic or cosmetic in-app purchases. Yeah, like you can like get that. like a Luigi skin or like Toad yeah. Peach skins. Yeah. But maybe not. You know, I mean, Nintendo, they have said uh, when talking about their kind of entry into mobile that it's very important to them that they don't release games that kids will, you know, maybe who don't know what they're doing will end up buying a right. lot of in-app purchases. They're not about that model, which is encouraging right. to see. Yeah, and, and Mario's the perfect vehicle for that kind of platform. I would be surprised if somewhere down the line they don't do something like that, you know, just a light amount of, like, in-app purchases, but nothing to, like, get worried about. Um, and also, I wouldn't imagine that to come anytime soon. Um, but... The other interesting thing about that is that I think it gives Mario Super Mario Run a really good position in the App Store to say, "Hey, look, this is a you know something you can download and play for free." Um, and then uh, the one time, you know, it's essentially sort of the free to play trick feels like the wrong word, but the free to play trick, and then yeah. um, uh, you know, and then the trick is just that you buy it once. Which is really nice, you know, it's not it's not getting you hooked and making you pay more and more and more. It's just try it for free. If you like it, you can buy the full one. If not, you still have your demo. Yeah, and I mean and I think that th th this kind of debut for Mario in the App Store gives Nintendo already a decidedly positive reputation in the App Store for not yeah. releasing games that are just laden with in app purchases that are essentially sure. free to play. Because everyone, you know, we know as gaming enthusiasts that you most people are not interested, most enthusiastic gamers, I should say, are not interested at all in that kind of model. And I think Nintendo sure. shows that. And they knew at least, you know, this doesn't say, this isn't to say that Animal Crossing and Fire Emblem in the future won't adopt some sort of free to play model. But I think they knew that for Mario, their flagship character and franchise, yeah. that was not a, a road they wanted to travel down. Definitely, definitely. Now, it appears that there's also some sort of asynchronous multiplayer mode going on with this, where you can take on your friend's level run times, you know, not necessarily mm -hmm. live, but, you know, they can, your friend can set a time, and then you can challenge that friend later on in some sort yeah. of asynchronous battle mode. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, uh, the thing that I didn't understand about that was how exactly the toads work. So, like, the, the, the better you play, the more toads start, like, cheering you on, right? Is that... That's, so that's kind of what I got. Yeah, I was kind okay. of, you know, scrambling to, like, put my contacts in and stuff, like, yeah. when, was, when they were going through all this. I'm like, what's going on? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so I think that's how that works. But then at the end of the match, when Toadette, like, judges, you know, how well you did, uh, Toadette judges you all the time. Uh, oh, you get all the time. The t <laughs> you get the Toads um, in your different kingdoms. And Miyamoto said you can collect and customize them depending on how many coins you get. But yeah. what they showed only... 
seemed to show just like a number of toads on the results screen. I didn't really understand the gameplay function of that, so I wonder if there's something more to the game that we haven't seen yet that's a little bit more like a... I don't want to say like a sim type game. Right. But, you know, you know what I mean? Like some, just some sort of little village accumulation thing. Yeah, like some sort of collection element. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I don't know what at all that would look like or even if it's happening. Um, it may have just been, you know, a mistranslation. Well, I know uh, in the App Store description, it talks about this third mode where it says you can create your own mushroom kingdom using coins collected by playing the okay. first two game modes. So, okay. so it, it does, does sound, sound like, like there's maybe some sort of collection building element. Okay, because we have only seen the two modes so far. Right. The Toad so, Battle yeah. and the main mode. Yeah, okay. The other thing I was kind of wondering about Mario Run is, can you take damage in this game? Yes, I know you yeah. can be Little Mario, <laughs> and I know you can be Super Mario, but I didn't see any moment where he takes damage from enemies, and I wonder, and maybe this is just because I was thinking about it during the battle mode, uh, where he said, um, you run until the time runs out. So maybe you don't get damaged then. That's potential, or I mean, that, that's possible. But you know, maybe it's also just because the game is obviously in an unfinished state, or we we're watching yeah. a really early level. Yeah, that's I true. I would be shocked. If, I mean, if at least Goombas and Koopas did, did make an appearance, just because. Oh yeah. You know, oh no. They, a, yeah. There are lots of enemies, but I'm wondering. I, like, I noticed that at some point Mario was sort of like leapfrogging over Goombas, and I couldn't tell if yeah. that was like a short hop animation, or if that's what happens when he runs into them. And so he like that's just how Mario keeps going. Um, so my, well, my guess I, I agree. Is that you I would have be shocked if he over. doesn't take damage in some way, but I just don't know how that's going to actually work out if it does. Yeah, I, I, my guess is that you would have to, you know, time the jumps to go over the, you know, to, to hop over the yeah. enemies because right. the whole thing was about, you know, time, tapping the screen to time your jumps, and I guess depending on how you tap it, you, Mario jumps differently. So right. my guess is that Mario can take damage and lose lives. That seems like it would be a strange mm -hmm. thing to let go of. Right. Yeah, well, I agree. Again, at least for yeah, the main we, mode. we didn't see it though. You're right. Yeah, uh, at least for the main mode, I'm I'm part of my concern is in the Toad battle. Like, if if you challenge someone who's not like like let's say either of us who probably will be relatively good at this game challenges right. one of our friends who like has never touched Mario before, and we get to the end of the level till the time runs out, but they play for 15 seconds and they die. Like that's not even right. close to a fair. Toad battle, I guess it's called. Um, That's true. You know, so how do they sort of balance that? And I, I wonder then if they decide, well, maybe we just won't have damage in Toad battle, if then they carry that back over to the main mode because, you know, it can get confusing if the mechanics don't translate one to one between the different kinds of platforming modes. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems it's a big open question for me, but I, I still I would be really surprised if they don't have damage in some way. Well, yeah, and no, I would too. And that brings up an interesting discussion in, in terms of how this game will appeal, you know, maybe similarly or differently to enthusiast gamers and people picking up Mario for the first time. Like, yeah. you know, is is this a game that, that those two groups are going to be able to play together like you were just touching on? Or is this something that, you know, there might be some sort of schism between skilled players who have played Mario games since they were a baby and then yeah. you know, maybe this other group of people who may not have ever played a platformer ever, and maybe they're more well-suited to playing with each other. Right. I really hope that, that they can manage that balance well. Um, I yeah. don't know that they can because, uh, for example, enthusiast gamers are sick and tired of the new Super Mario Bros. aesthetic. Um, yes. Yeah. So that's a red flag. Um, whereas, you know, whereas new gamers, that's just Mario to them. Um... And, you know, that skill gap can really be a problem in Toad Battle, depending how they manage, like, damage and, and all that. Um, but I also just wonder whether the game itself is going to be interesting enough to keep people playing regularly anyway. Uh, exactly. No matter their ability level, because I, I can see a problem from the enthusiast side where the early levels are geared too far towards people who have never played Mario before, don't really play games very much. And then, you know, the first two or three worlds are just easy and boring and they don't hook you. Um, so you play, you know, you play for 30 minutes, an hour total, um, and you just sort of let it go. Uh, whereas on the casual side, I can definitely see uh, a similar issue where if it's too boring, and it doesn't hook them immediately, then they might drop it. But at the same time, the greater difficulty there is that if it's 
too hard, then they can, right. you know, not get a hang of it quickly enough and drop it there. So they've got they've got these two hurdles to overcome for the casual market. Um, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I, I hope they can navigate that really well, but it's a fine line. No, I mean, it really is. It's it's This is, you know, still mostly a new frontier for them. And, mm -hmm. you know, obviously they want a slice of that mobile pie. And, and there's no doubt. I mean, I've seen, of course, the usual meltdown of reactions on Twitter where, like, oh, this is the end. And, and you know, Nintendo is going Hell mobile. Hell is frozen and, over. And it's like, it's like, no. I mean, this is very clearly, you know, Nintendo's been very transparent about their angle for mobile and how they're using mm -hmm. it to kind of catapult people and draw them back into their main console and handheld businesses. So, right. And they've you know, got this, another this, this console coming doing. in March. Remember, guys. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand. The, oh, well, they're dead. This, confir this confirms it. They've got the NX coming in March. Yeah. And, you know, why not take a piece of that mobile pie? I mean, even Sony just came out in support of Nintendo's, you know, aggressive mobile initiative now, mm -hmm. saying, you know, Pokemon Go was astounding and it, it's, right. it's performed so well. And we are looking at what Nintendo has done in, in the mobile space and, and deciding, hey, we really need to get on this because there's so much money to be made here. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Um, and, and it's also, you know, important to remember that the Wii U is really not doing well. The 3DS is, it's an old console. It did exactly. well when it was healthy, but it's an old console. That just happens to hardware. Right. Yeah. You know, it, that's not a sign of the 3DS's failure. That just means it's six years old. Um, so they're not getting as much revenue from the games they're releasing on those platforms. They're not getting as much revenue from the sales of those platforms. So, you know, this can tide them over in the meantime. And hopefully it's a big enough crowd of people that they're appealing to here that they can get the kind of money that would fund initiatives like building that Nintendo Land in Universal, like making an F-Zero game for once, like making yeah. that new Metroid Prime, you know, things that, that have fallen by the wayside as they've become more risk averse as a company um, that they now are able to do more and more of. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we know that, N that Nintendo has a massive war chest and that's all well and good, but mm -hmm. no matter how massive your war chest is, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean you can do everything you want, especially if your profits are starting to slow. You yeah, know, absolutely. Especially considering the you know the Wii U is essentially a failure at market. Let's just you know put it out there. It basically is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know why why Nintendo wouldn't want a piece of this mobile pie? I mean, it's it just makes too much sense to do. And like you're saying, Definitely. all we can do is hope that the increased revenue from these sales will lead to projects that may otherwise have not not gotten made just in the interest of playing it safe. Right. So, uh, but. Speaking of surprise announcements, uh, this isn't real, Super Mario Run is not the only thing they announced at the iPhone 7 yeah. keynote. So we thought we were done, and we were like, okay, we can relax and just watch the rest of the keynote. <laughs> no, nice try. Niantic is there. Yeah, Neontic <laughs> are there to announce the Apple Watch version of Pokemon Go, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, it, it, it's not exactly a surprising announcement, but it, it was surprising to see it today, I think. It was surprising in that I know one person with an Apple Watch. But otherwise, it, you know, it's a perfect companion device for Pokemon Go. It's a, it looks like a great Pokemon Go companion app, and Pokemon Go could really use a nice companion app because I do not want to have that open in my pocket on my phone all day, uh, especially to hatch eggs. So I think that that's a really great solution for the game itself, but I don't know how many people are actually going to be using it. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is something that really... It's kind of like the Pokemon Go Plus, which is it's its geared toward super enthusiast Pokemon right. Go players. And, and that's and fine. And I think super I mean, enthusiast I, yeah. Apple owners, too. I don't know that, that, I don't know <laughs> that point. either one of those, that Pokemon Go or Apple Watch, will be able to convince someone who is interested in only one to get the other. I mean... Yeah, I don't know that anyone who owns Apple Watch doesn't already own Pokemon Go, but right. I mean, this is a very specific market. I mean, I mean, the, yeah. the amount of people who want to spend that much money on, on a smartwatch and own right. an Apple Watch in general—that's already kind of a very specific market. And then you have to go within that market to find hardcore uh, Pokemon Go players who are going to even bother installing the app on their watch. Right. Like, if I had an Apple Watch, I would definitely go for it. But sure, you know, when they announced this, I was like, oh wow, maybe I should think about getting an Apple Watch. Oh no, those are upwards of $1,000. I can't yeah. do that. <laughs> now, I, I, don't, I, I only saw it in passing because I was busy, you know, getting all this coverage out. But I think they just watched, they announced the third generation of Apple Watches, and I think they start at 270 
Oh wow! Or something. I could be wrong. Now that's okay. just that could just be me overhearing what I you know what I thought. Still I a heard. little more than I'm willing to spend on a watch. But no, definitely exactly. not a thousand dollars. It's not a thousand bucks. You know, I think okay. I think we're past the gener- you know the first generation yeah. smart watches where it's like this is pie in the sky technology for only the most right. hardcore adopters. I think we've kind of gotten into that more that wider market penetration now. But okay. at the same time, I agree with you. I'm not gonna. I'm not yeah. the kind of person. Two seventy is still too much for a Pokemon Go tax. companion app. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's definitely something that you get if you already have an Apple Watch. Now that right. said, if I did, I'd be all over this because I'm actually yeah. am still playing Pokemon Go. I am one of the people that has kind of stuck with it, and I'm finding it fun. I'm mm-hmm. at least trying to fill out my Pokedex, and this would be a great way for me to be able to do that. What you know, without having to take out my phone and look at each spawn that I hear happen. So yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's definitely it's very much a supplemental app, so you can't actually catch Pokemon in, uh, on the Apple Watch version, but you can. Oh, you can! See. I thought I heard you can. Oh, maybe okay, maybe maybe you can. I thought that you could do everything essentially, but that I thought it was more informational. Like it'll tell you if a Pokemon spawns nearby, and it'll tell you how much more distance you have to walk to hatch like the egg you're working on. I did hear. And so I forth. did hear all of that. I thought you could also catch Pokemon on the app, but I'm not sure. Welcome to Game Explain, where we ask yeah. you guys to explain I know. to us. I, yeah, I, I looked into it before we started recording this. I don't think so. I mean, if, if you can, then what would be the point of the main app? Yeah. Exactly. No, I, yeah. I uh, I don't know. Yeah, because I mean, I feel like, you know, with the, the, the Apple Watch's limited screen real estate, clearly, because it's a watch, I feel right. like that would take most of the skill element, well, whatever skill element yeah, that's there true. is, involved in catching Pokemon. So I feel like you can't catch Pokemon in the app, but I could be mistaken. Yeah, no, that's a good point. it just doesn't seem like you'd be able to. I mean, it doesn't like why, though, because then why have the regular app, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it does conveniently tell you how many calories you burn. So if you're using Pokemon Go as kind of an excuse to go out and exercise, too. As a fitness app. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's kind of a cool thing. Because I know, at least for myself, I'm not using it specifically for that purpose, but I have been getting a lot more exercise since the launch of Pokemon Go. And so, you know, having a fitness tracking element in that, in the watch version, makes sense. Your calves will thank you, Nintendo fans. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I guess uh, that really is the main question then, is whether you can actually catch Pokemon within the app and how that would change the, dy- the dynamic if you could. But it just seems to me that that would kind of make the regular app not as necessary. Yeah, no, you're definitely so. right about that. But also, I kind of feel like that could be a good thing. Like, if I had an <laughs> Apple true. Watch with Pokemon Go on it, I definitely wouldn't want to pull my phone in and out of my pocket all the time just to access it. I would, you know, I'd would, know, i just rather have it on my watch, easily available whenever. Well, and I guess maybe that maybe the thinking is, you know, you can look, you can hear a spawn happen, you check your watch, it's a Rattata, and you're like, well, I'm not going to pick, you know, yeah, my phone exactly. for that. Yeah, exactly. But a Snorlax spawns, and you're like, oh, well, I better pull my, uh, my phone. So it may at least act as that kind of initial barrier to knowing whether you need to pull out your phone or not. For sure. Uh, one thing I know that you can do is you can activate Pokestops. So you'll get like yep. a little notification, and you tap, and then you can swipe to pick up items from a Pokestop, which is, that Super I would useful. say is almost the biggest part of it. Yeah. You, yeah. I would say, you know, when I'm playing Pokemon Go, the main thing I'm interacting with is Pokestops. Um... And, and being able to just swipe those on the watch so much better than pulling my phone out all the time or just keeping it out and looking at it, walking around with my face, you know, in it like a moron. Like, I don't, you know, it's just so much better of a solution to be able to have that on your watch, activate them at any time you want. Now, the only concern I have is the driving element because I already know there are people out there who activate Pokestops while they're driving. Or, you know, mm-hmm. who, who will be at least trying to. And now yeah, I'm worried that, that we're going to have people looking at our phones. Because I'm not sure if it's a good or bad thing that app, the Apple Watch version of Go makes it easier to activate Pokestops. Because now there's going to be even less of a barrier of entry to people just doing this while they're driving. The barrier to entry still exists <laughs> because nobody has an Apple Watch. Well, that's... Hey, there you go. <laughs> Ouch. Stone cold. I love it. <laughs> But uh, no, that's um, yeah, no, point. you're definitely right. And if the lower price tag of the Apple Watch gets a lot more customers in there, then that is a big question. Um, I'm inclined to think that because it's so much more easily accessible, uh, and fewer people have an Apple Watch, and the number of daily active users of Pokemon Go is declining, that those factors combined means it won't be a significant concern. But you know, I, I could be totally wrong about that, so... Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if they said anything about this, but I believe that 
Pokemon Go has not been announced for any other smartwatches. I, th I think it is only Apple Watch, which leads me to think that, you know, yeah, there is some sort of exclusivity thing happening with Nintendo and Apple here, because we know that Super Mario Run is iOS exclusive for at least a, a little while. Yeah, I don't know that that's anything to read into, just because I didn't even really know that other smartwatches existed. <laughs> like Oh, like, like I, the Pebble and such? Yeah, it's like, you know, if, if something... Oh, the Pebble, I've definitely heard of the Pebble. Yeah. Um, no, I, I just mean that, you know, um... I just mean that, um, it's, my brain's too scattered from the morning. I'm looking no, for No, I understand. Word. Mine too. Uh, I get it. Pa not parabolically, not allegorically. I, it's a side story. It's a personal example for oh, me. Oh, tang tangentially or anecdotally. Nope, not that. Anecdotally. There we there go. There you go. Anecdotally. <laughs> Welcome Here's to the Game Explain. Anecdotally. <laughs> I just mean that anecdotally as to say that, you know, Smartwatches aren't a very big market, and Apple is definitely the dominant force in it right now. Sure. It's like, you know, any any app coming to, like, a BlackBerry Storm in 2006, you know? Like, it just doesn't make that much sense. If you're going right. to release a smartphone app, you're going to do it on iPhone. And right, right, you know, in 2016, if you're going to release a smartwatch app, you're going to do it on Apple Watch. Good. I mean, I you know, Android has a huge market share for the for you know smartphones though, so I they can't yeah. hold out on the Google Play Store for too long. Like oh, they, for sure. I, I'm thinking maybe early 2017 at the latest. We're talking and, about Mario and, Run again now, right? Yeah. Sorry. Well, okay, yes, yeah. Super Mario Run, or I guess just in general, if we're talking about, I guess Nintendo's we could maybe consider Pokemon Go roll out on other smartwatches too. But I guess mainly Mario Run. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I thinking, agree. I'm thinking maybe February or March at the latest. I, this is, you know, Super Mario Run is supposed to be ready by the holidays this it's year. It's going to come so. before NX for sure. Right. So yeah, I mean, I, it has to because Google Play is already. It has a huge potential audience there that Nintendo is going to get so much more revenue from beyond just iPhone users. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you want to tell our listeners where they can find you on the internet? Yeah, so you can find me, of course, at Gamnesia.com. You can also find me on iTunes, YouTube, wherever, uh, at the Nintendo Week podcast, where we talk every week about Nintendo news, games, you know, lists, fun stuff. It's a really fun show. We've got segments and intros and music. It's a, little t it's a blast. You can check us out on YouTube at Gamnesia TV for some clips from it. If you want to, you know, get more involved and see a little taste of it before you subscribe on iTunes, so you can check it out. All right, well, thanks again for joining us. Absolutely, my pleasure. And as always, guys, if you like this discussion, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Otherwise, keep it on Game Explained for more on Super Mario Run, Pokemon Go, and all things gaming. Until next time, guys. Bye.